morning, everyone, and thank you for joining today's feature preview webinar. My name is Tatiana and I'm part of marketing team here at Hornbill. Today's webinar will be run by my colleague Dave Hodgen, um, the product owner uh, here at Hornbill. Dave will take us through the, the, and demonstrate new features and recent releases of SupportWorks ESP 8.1 and ITSM Enterprise 4.1. Just to inform you, uh, delegate audio will be muted during presentation to help facilitate flow and timekeeping. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the GoToMeeting questions facility you can find on the right hand side of the screen. We'll collect the questions and answer them at the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for taking time to attend and I will now pass you over to Dave. Thanks everyone. Um, just to let you know, start off, uh, everybody likes to know what's coming up, whether it's going to be weather at the weekend or possibly even the lottery tickets. Not quite along that theme, but today I'm going to take you through some of the features which we have recently developed and talk about some features which are coming up in the next releases of SupportWorks and ITSM. And we'll also uh, have a little bit of a chat about uh, some of the things a little bit further down the line uh, in future releases as well, just to keep you up to date with what sorts of things are happening. So let's start off with SupportWorks uh, ESP, effectively the platform system. So this will be the next release on the platform. And the main thing in here is that it's something which we've developed. I'll show you a demo of this fairly shortly. But uh, it's around the call profiles area. Some things have been discussed for a little while about what sort of features could really enhance this to make it a lot more usable for both the administrat administration side and also for the analyst side. So the things we'll cover will be prompting for duplicates whenever you create a new profile. There's a wonderful feature, but it sort of catches people a little bit by surprise whenever they find sub-levels or generated when they weren't expecting them to. So I'll demonstrate that and, and show you how you, can, how you can work around it. The next one will be uh, improved search options so that whenever uh, an analyst goes in and tries to find something, they'll be able to find it a lot more easily. So a couple of options in there. Uh, there's a few things highlighted on, on the screenshot to do with the, uh, the quick codes. Uh, I'll show you that and also say a bit of a search uh, facility as well. Marker profiles is unavailable, uh, deactivating them. So from an administrative perspective, you can go in and say, we no, no longer use this code. It's still in the system. It's still in the database. But it does mean when analyst goes in to uh, work on the system, they're not going to see that particular code. So hence, it's effectively not being used for any more um, sort of calls when it being raised within the system. Final thing on the list will be to look at the, the profile filtering at lower levels. This comes back to whenever you've got, uh, whether it's a shared desk or whether there are certain things you want in different uh, call forms to be able to say, I only want to see hardware, I only want to see software, whatever your split happens to be, whether it's IT, HR, whatever the system uh, you're working with needs to have filtering in there. So what this will do is allow that to happen at a lower level, so you don't have to set that at the top level. So again, I'll run through a couple of demonstrations of these, let you see how they work within the system, and you can get a flavor of uh, the facilities in there. We start off by looking at the uh, administrative side of things. And first of all, in here, you'll notice we've got the usual array of profiles. First one to mention, uh, there's a couple of these tick boxes showing down here. So we've got dedicated hosting under hardware. That's currently deactivated. And in a few moments, I'll take you through uh, a log call form, and we'll hopefully not see that. It's a strange way to demonstrate, but that should be off the list just to show you that particular feature as coming up. So these are fairly quick to do, quick to put on in terms of the administrative layer as well. We look into the laptop area, we've got this pin to quick code tab, and I'll show you that quick code tab whenever we come on to, uh, again, the login form. A few other areas down here, we've ticked that box as well, just so you can see there are a few coming onto that particular screen. One of the other features in here we talked about was this option to create, um, uh, when you're creating a profile, you're using the same code that was in before at the same particular level, then it will do, uh, what we put in now is to prompt for a duplicate. Before it would just do it, you wouldn't know, and, and that was sort of the, the issue which uh, sort of became a little bit challenging on occasions. So if we look under laptop, we'll notice down here at the third level, we've got particular um, code in place. Uh, servers also have power supply, so if we create a um, power option in there for that one, and same particular code, it will come up and prompt. Profile code already exists, do you wish to create a duplicate of all of the subcontents? So you've got the option for yes or no. 
If you select no to this particular one, you've got, you can go back in and choose a different code. But if we leave that just for the sake of the demonstration and choose yes, a bit of a refresh in there. So power, we notice that has taken on exactly the same codes we've got in the, uh, the previous one. So that's the duplication uh, piece, just a little prompt in there. Again, whenever you're creating them, it just uh, helps you out with making sure it's a bit more um, what you're expecting within the system. You've got the option to go back and choose a different code if you want to, so you can still go ahead and create the different ones in there. So if we leave that within the system, that's most of the stuff within the admin side. A couple of checkboxes going in there for the deactivate and the quick codes. Um, we've seen that in a couple of places. We have to remember this dedicated hosting and the option whenever you're creating a, um, a new uh, profile at the same level as before. So if we now go in and try that out uh, in anger, as it were, and if we have a look at the log incident form, first thing we'll notice that under hardware, there's no dedicated hosting. So that deactivate has been working in there nicely. Next thing we'll have a look at in here is the, the search option. If I could type the correct thing, if we do power, for example, We've got laptop power supply, so that's coming up as expected. There's also one on the software to do with PowerPoint. Again, it's just that quick way of, of finding these particular things, whether you want to drill down, the analyst knows roughly what they're looking for, may not be familiar with the code structure uh, that you've implemented, so they can go in and find those a lot more simply, a lot more straightforward manner of doing that. These are quick codes, which we mentioned, and again, with these, you can just select one, and that will apply straight through to the call. Put that details on the call, uh, etc. The description going in, the category is selecting there as before. So what I'm going to do now to show you the next little piece is the the filtering. So if I actually take that particular code for uh, hardware and laptop and just show that the the filter will work at the lower level. So if we cancel from that and we close this form, just reopen form to make sure that information is cleared. We configure that form and put a filter um, in here. Make sure I get my syntax correct. And that should now filter at a lower level. For those who've been working this with this before, will know that it's basically just at the top level. So this particular piece would be not there. You just have the top level, one particular code level in there, and that obviously becomes a little bit restrictive in certain scenarios. So I'm going to put this at the lower level. Again, you can work out your own scenarios with how that would go in in different, uh, your different desks, how that will work, different forms, different call classes, depending on the rights of the analyst and what sort of roles they perform within the system. So if we apply that, and now we open this up, we'll notice that that's gone down, and all I can see is the hardware laptop, and I can choose particular codes within that, and they will come through as before. So that's the, uh, the piece to do with the... Um, uh, on the call profiles uh, and a little bit of run through and how that's going to operate for you. So hopefully that will make things a little bit more straightforward from both the admin side and also from the uh, perspective of the analyst. One of the other things which uh, I've uh, actually mentioned in the previous uh, newsletter, which went out through the marketing, was something more in the lower level. I haven't put any particular information on this slide about it. It's more of a technical kind of detail at the lower level. But we've converted the database type to what's known as InnoDB. This is low level. It is a bit of um, uh, nuts and bolts behind the system. But what it does mean is that there's scope within certain areas to, to leverage some of the performance features within that. So it means the database should work and respond a little bit quicker. How that translates through to uh, different implementations really depends on quite a few other factors, the sort of desk you have, whether you've got a lot of analysts, a lot of activity going on, what sort of activity it is, etc. But certainly from an underlying, uh, as I say, the, the background, the nuts and bolts area, it does improve things quite a bit. And hopefully some of that will come through and be available uh, and, and obvious whenever you're doing certain actions on the form. But don't necessarily expect it to be a, a stark difference. It's something which is there in the background. It may need to be tweaked. We'll need to do some things to make sure it's set up uh, in different environments. But it does give us a lot more potential within that particular area. So we have a look now at the, the next things on the list. These are things which are, if you like, in the development phase. We're working on them. There's nothing specifically to, to demonstrate at this point, but it's things we're working through in terms of how they're going to be implemented, what sort of details, how they're going to, uh, anything from look and feel to configuration, how that's going to work, uh, et cetera. So these are the things in, process, in progress at present. First thing on the list is the email. The option there is to attach a sent email with email list update. 
So if you're obviously doing a standard call diary, you can email the, the customer, that then email get attached to the call. With this particular one, if you go back to a previous call diary entry, you can email this update. Within that particular route, there is, of course, potential to, to modify the content of the email. And again, it's just making sure that order trail goes in, so that goes into the, uh, the attachments to the, the call as well. So it's, it, it's apparent if someone comes back to it and says, okay, I see what happened, that got changed later on, et cetera, et cetera. So you've got that flow of information coming in there. The next thing on the list also linked with emails is to do with images within the templates. There's some features in there at present to do that. We're going to do a little bit more enhancement around that area. Um, this may well uh, transpire to do with the, uh, the signature. So you set up an email signature, which becomes a bit more generic. And again, it's just making that personal feel. So as far as the service desk communicating out to your customers, you've got that, your own logos, you've got a specific banner, you've got certain things that are going on, whether it's a general notification, whatever it happens to be, you can send that out in a more sort of pictorial manner. Customers read that, they're more likely to pick up the information as opposed to just a typed message to the bottom. But, so those are a couple of things which are coming into the email side to, uh, to promote that uh, part as well. The next thing on the list for the, uh, the platform side is the simplified upgrades. There are actually a couple of aspects to this, and one of them is, is uh, down to, if you like, the version numbers and how the client knows when to upgrade. But the second one is probably a little bit more important for, for a lot of deployment scenarios because whenever an analyst receives a message to say there's a new version of the client, do you want to install it? That effectively means that that analyst is performing a, a software upgrade or an upgrade to an application on their uh, machine. As you're all uh, pretty well aware, the, the scenario exists where not all the analysts will have sufficient privileges to do that. So this particular route here, by enabling this uh, automatic client upgrades and simplifying that particular route, means that when the, the prompt comes up, when the information comes up, the way the mechanism works behind it will not rely on the, the different rights of that particular analyst. And again, that's how it's being implemented. There may, of course, be initial things when it's set up for the first time of deployment that you have to uh, do that within a certain role, within certain rights on the, the machine. But further down the line with the analyst with reduced privileges, which should be, still be able to get the later versions from the particular server. So that's one thing which will, again, really uh, reduce the, if you like, the, the overhead, the, the project management side, the timelines. If you're doing a, a rollout, you're taking another upgrade. So we'll really simplify that approach whenever we have an it one and it two, et cetera, coming out. New features in there you want to take, you want to take advantage of. The actual rollout to the, the clients will be an awful lot less of a, uh, you know, an awful lot less work to be done in that particular area. So those are things within the uh, the platform side. We'll now move on, have a look within the application side, IDSM Enterprise. And first couple of things here, uh, some of these things uh, demonstrate these two, uh, uh, both of these two uh, fairly shortly. First one is the ability to import and export self-service wizards. Scenario here being you've got your test system, you go through, you set up your wizard, you've got all the questions, all the steps, uh, jumps to different particular uh, questions depending on answers, implemented within your test system, all confirmed, all happy with that, signed off, lovely, fantastic. You then decide, right, we need to get that onto the live system. So what this facility will do is allow you to export, if you like, the definition of that uh, wizard. It will then move that across through uh, a file. You copy that, you move that onto your, uh, your live server, and then you can load that in, and the exact definition of that wizard is available there. So you can then go into your uh, service request definitions and be able to say, this one is going to use this new particular uh, self-service wizard. Customers can then follow through with that. So I'll demonstrate that to you in a quick moment. The next one on the list is the task assignment calendar, the ability to schedule and manage tasks within a sort of a calendar view. I'll give a demo of this, but I have to say that this is in the middle of, of development. It, there's still a little bit of uh, polishing up to do, so hopefully you won't get too many glitches in there, but uh, as I said, it's still being worked on. There's still a few more features and a few more um, polishing up, a few more uh, loose ends to tie up within that area. But what it does mean is that from your uh, generally probably an admin perspective, but uh, other people on the desk will have the ability to go in and see, I've assigned these tasks, this particular person's got a lot on at present, or they've got very little on next week, et cetera, and then use that to be able to determine when the task will be scheduled in uh, and put into the system. So it gives that overview. So if we swap through now and uh, to a support works, 
and start off with having a look at the, uh, the self-service wizards. So this is within the general settings area on the self-service wizards tab. You'll notice at present, this is a fairly uh, basic install in here, so I've got the general request support wizard. If we have a look at the uh, web self-service uh, utility, it's got a bit of an introduction page. We then look at the export option. We choose we can export this particular wizard. That will then run through. It will create a particular file, and that will be available on the server to be able to move to different places. So it's exporting that definition. We look at the manage files. We can see that one on the list, and we can also see another one down here, which I've created from another system. I should pull down to this particular system. We've got the option here to manage these, to download them, to delete them. Obviously, download if you're going to move them to another server, delete them, said, right, I've worked with that. I no longer need that in a particular system. You do get prompted if you want to remove that. That will then take a moment, and that will refresh this particular list. Uh, that will be off the list, but we can still see the other new starter one in place. There's obviously an upload feature as well. So if you go into your live system, you'll want to upload a file to that live system. Usual browse, check what's in your machine, upload that to the server, and that will then be available on the next screen to do with the import. So this is one which I've copied on a little while ago onto the server. So it's a new starter request, fairly sort of normal uh, definition in here. You notice that it's got the ITSM under default, and this is part of the side-by-side -side, uh, features, how they're going to be operating. So you can see within the different uh, almost applications in there, I've also got standard ITSM, which has been copied from the ITSM default. Uh, I can choose that and do an import and pull that into the system. So that will complete. That's now brought that into the system, uh, and we'll come back in a quick moment and have a look at that within the, the list. Just before we move off this particular screen, we've got um, some help in here. It just takes you through uh, generally what's happening, how the exports and imports are working, uh, a little bit about the different pages that are in here, uh, what you have on the export, how this is set up, etc., on, on the system. So it just gives you that help, it's sort of close to where you need it to be to be able to find out what's, what's going on uh, to do with the import and export of self-service wizard. So we're coming back to the other screen, and if we just refresh that, we'll notice here's the new uh, wizard we, we've uh, just pulled in, just imported this particular one. So it has come through from the XML file that wasn't there initially, but if we drill through this a little bit, we have a look at the different steps, different questions. We'll see this all populated with the various information, selection boxes, choices, etc., coming in here. And if we have a look, for example, on uh, step three, it's got a question in here uh, to do with the length of the contract. If we have a look back on step two, the fulfillment aspects. It asks the question in here, is a contract higher permanent or, or temporary? And that gives us the option, well, with the questions, but also with these questions, we can say, I want to jump to a particular step in a particular uh, wizard. So that's how the control works through. You're all familiar with that. That's a standard thing within the previous ones, but I just want to demonstrate all that information comes through whenever you do an import of these particular wizards onto the system. So that's going through the uh, wizard aspect. If we now have a look at the next piece, which we talked about, which was the, uh, the task scheduler. So within this, you've got various sort of areas on the screen. We've got on the left-hand side, a little bit of configuration to make sure you know which groups are going to be available in here. But these are effectively your support groups and obviously analysts within that. Uh, we can do things like add another analyst to the screen and that uh, will appear up as another list where, uh, on, the, on the center part of the screen. If you don't want that particular one, that can then be removed. You can ask that to be uh, prompted for that to come off the screen. The other thing we have over here is a uh, different views, whether you want to go to the month view, be able to scroll across the month. Uh, you've also got a day view if you want to drill down into particular hours on, on a day to depending on the uh, granularity you need. What we'll also notice is uh, down here, I've got a fairly basic incident created with uh, one or two tasks against it. And this list on the right hand side will show those particular tasks and the uh, options up on the screen will, will show the actual ones that have been assigned. So if we drag this one on, it's all through fairly straightforward, drag and drop. That will then come on the screen, and again, a little refresh to, to look at here, but that will then come up, and you've got the option to say, right, that's what's happening. Someone else can have a look at this, and 
be able to say, yes, I know what's going on. They've got a lot on their plate or we'll have to move forward to possibly the, the next week and see what's happening. Is there another slot coming in there? Other things as well, if you decide, well, they're not going to do that particular task or I want to reassign that to somebody else, you can drag this down here and then you get the option to uh, unschedule that particular event and that will then move to clear uh, from the screen. There are other options in here if you want to move things across. So uh, once that's sort of cleared down from the screen, we'll be able to see how we can drag a particular uh, task onto a different date. Do you want to reschedule that to a different date? Yes, okay. We need to be aware that's a Saturday, so obviously those are uh, sort of grayed out depending on, um, you know, obviously different people may not be working on that sort of Saturday or Sunday. So those options are in there. It's all fairly much drag and drop. You've got uh, sort of calendar features to scroll through, select different information there. We've showed you about the dates. We've showed you as well about the analysts coming uh, and being visible, how you want to show those on the system as well. So that's hopefully going to give you quite a bit of um, you know, oversight about the, if you like, so we say the busyness of the desk. It's not just calls in the queue. It's also knowing they've got different tasks to work on. Some places those need to be scheduled down to different levels of granularity if you need to go down to a day view. Um, other places it's just general uh, on a week view. They're doing two, three, four tasks, whatever, on a particular uh, view for that. So that will cover that sort of covers the the features to do with the uh, the engineering sort of the task scheduler piece uh, which is coming up uh, in the next release. Next things which we're working on again for the next release. The first one on the list here is exporting reports to Excel. Development's already underway within that. We've got uh, some of the background pieces in place. Some of the you know that the, there is building blocks put in. And, and what it means is that from certain reports, there are obviously some reports which don't lend themselves to being exported if they're just displaying a graph, for example, but other reports where there's data contained in it, uh, there should be an option in there to, to export, to generate a, a CSV file, which is then obviously usable within Excel. So you'll have the raw data in there. You can then merge those, manipulate those, use the powers within Excel to um, you know, do the data manipulation if you need to be uh, within that, produce different sorts of graphs, what have you in there. So it just gives you that flexibility if you've got different reporting requirements going across to uh, management levels uh, to see the particular features that are, that are coming up there. The next one is the SLA rules. And the main point in here is the, the configurability for the different call classes. This is another piece which for some of you at the, uh, the user group, the road shows we had uh, last year, we had a theme about the upgradability, and this does follow through that particular theme uh, again. If you set up the system at present, there are a few areas we need to go in and design forms and change things in different places to determine where the default SLA is going to come from, whether that's on the incident form, log incident form, um, service request form, etc. Not likely that one normally comes to services, but change requests and what have you. So the different places that uh, an SLA can come from. What we're doing within this is within, for example, the, uh, the customer or, or indeed the organization area. Same applies to CMDB and, and other parts of the system. But if you're choosing one of those and look at that particular set of data, you can then say, if I'm logging an incident from this, here's the SLA to choose. You can then set up the rules so whenever an incident is being logged, you can start off by looking at the CMDB, for example, configuration item that's been chosen. If there's none uh, applicable from that, you can drop down to the organization. If there's none applicable from that, you can drop down to customer, for example. And if need be, you can drop down to a default SLA to apply. So all of these rules are basically set up in a, in a configurable layer. That, that word's very important in here. So you will set those particular rules up. They will then be retained as you do an upgrade through the, the applications. So you take another version. You don't have to go back into forms do particular changes. You don't have to go back into different areas of the system and, and set the things up again, if you like, in some of these particular areas. So it makes that upgradable route an awful lot more uh, straightforward. And the, the configurable option there gives you quite a bit of control over that. You can set it up, determine how you want to use that. And that's all fairly straightforward to, uh, to do within the system. So those are a couple of the options which, uh, again, we're looking at on the uh, sort of uh, the next on the development list for, for this particular release. We look a little bit further ahead. So this is the releases after the 8.1 and the ITSM Enterprise 4.1. So it's moving on to some features. Some of these, again, have been covered a little bit before, but I want to just highlight a few things which are, if you like, happening at present. So the first thing on the list is the updated self-service. 
We've talked about the uh, updating the, the user interface in this and making it a bit more fresh, a bit more modern. Part of that means that if you go onto a mobile device, you should be able to see and operate pretty well the same way as you do within the full, uh, a full browser size. Um, obviously, the layout will have to change from that. So the, the technical term is that the, uh, the code becomes responsive to the particular device you're on. But it does mean that then there's a familiar user interface. You've got familiar places to go to the same information. It's not a strange swap. It's not a completely different thing to be looking at. It will still be, um, if you like, a browser within the mobile device. But again, with this uh, responsive uh, capability on the system, it will cater for that. It will display in a way that's going to be a lot more readable, a lot more um, if you like, friendly to use as well. Some of the knowledge-centric pieces in here are enabling you to, when if you do a search, for example, it will pull back results from, from different parts of the system, uh, whether that's knowledge base, whether it's a particular service in the system uh, as well. So it just gives that uh, your customer that access to these things a lot more um, straightforwardly, less of a click, 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 less of kind of knowing how to get to things, more of a generic, I'm just doing a search, all oh, right, there's some relevant information, I've got that, I can now work with that. So again, it's just putting it into their sort of arena, making it a lot more straightforward, making the take up of the, uh, the self-service in different organizations a lot more um, eased, if you like, from your uh, perspective of deployment. Notifications as well, uh, some ad hoc things may come onto the, the desk, whether it's some busy period, uh, particular project going on, etc. Um, and again, you can just put that notification through. It's not necessarily a major incident. It's not necessarily affecting a particular service. We have ad hoc information going out to, to be able to say um, something's happening. You need to be aware of this. It may have whatever sort of impact to, to the customer base. The direct links to the services, again, call comes through to the desk. There's a reply going back by email to the customer. Please use this particular service. The link will be straight to that service. Obviously, single sign-on will probably assist there, but basically, when they get into the SportWorks uh, self-service, be able to drill down and actually see that particular, uh, so to be able to go straight to that particular service. No need to do the drill down uh, as before within the system. So that made, again, a bit more straightforward for customers to uh, sort of consume this feature uh, for themselves. The company branding will be uh, something like putting your own logo in the system. We'll look at a couple of things as well within the, the color scheme if you, for example, want to make some small changes within that area. Again, it's that personal approach. So you've got that sort of standard look and feel within your corporate image, and that follows through whenever the, uh, the self-service comes out to, uh, to the customers. Having a look at SupportWorks Mobile, um, some of these screenshots are obviously aware of a, a webinar that took place uh, um, a little while ago on this. We've got another webinar coming up uh, in March, I think it's March the 17th, and we'll have a bit more of a demonstration of these things, but just to show you sort of a bit of progress that's been going on on this. Um, the first screen here is the effective the menu side of things, the different areas, obviously, if you like, the, the data piece at the top within customers' assets and organizations. And then you've got the call management section at the bottom. Within the customers, if you drill into that area, there's a search facility at the top and then options to scroll through. Uh, there'll be possibly some facilities in here to do the swipe to be able to do quick things, whether you want to view details or, or potentially edit some details in there as well. But initially, that's going to be a list. It's probably going to come out um, in a you know an interim version of more of a read-only scenario, and we can build up the functionality later on within that. But you can certainly do a search and drill down into the information in there. We have a look at the My Incidents area. We can see the, the standard sort of mobile um, swipe facilities coming in here. So a green box will be an edit if you want, sorry, an update. If you want to go through and do an update to that particular incident, you've got swipe uh, and tap, and then that screen will come up be able to go through that I'll show you the update screen in a moment. The blue one there is the assignment, the red one is the resolve. Again, some of these will be um, possibly generic and some of these will be a bit more related to the, uh, the particular status of the incident you're looking at. Um, so obviously you may need to assign things, uh, accept things before you place them on hold, etc. accept them before you resolve them. So maybe a bit of sort of checking to go on there behind the scenes, but, but you have those swipe options and it just makes that more you know, familiar for an analyst, fairly quick to get access to these uh, pieces of uh, functionality to do the task, quick update, uh, and that then goes through on the system. The next thing in here will be the, the update form, and we've got a very, very similar thing happening on the, um, the, the resolution. So standard fields going in, got time spent, you put in a description, public, private update, various things happening there as well, choosing the action source and action type. So 
all, as I say, familiar with uh, doing things within the full client. You bring that across the mobile, very, very small sort of learning curve with this. It's all familiarity with the system, and you've got fairly quick access to the swipe functions to do that. Resolve form is going to look very, very similar to that. Uh, it's obviously doing an update uh, onto the system and then basically doing a slightly different action behind the scenes. But again, that's the, the familiarity coming through. So that's some, some of the things that we're working on here. These are, say, these screenshots have been taken fairly recently to, uh, to give you a flavor of, you know, progress is happening within this. It's something which is going to be coming out. Uh, you hope to be able to have something to, to view and download and start playing with fairly soon on this. But that, as I say, is, is coming through uh, fairly soon. So that's basically the, uh, the overview from my perspective. Um, Obviously, your screen here will tell you some things about the latest ways of uh, connecting to us, the latest bits of news uh, coming in there. And what we'll do now is sort of open things up if there are any particular questions that people have. And we'll do our best to go through and answer these. I'll probably put you in mute for a quick moment as I read through some of these, and then we'll uh, come back with a couple of the answers then. Okay, so the first question is relating to the, uh, the called profiles. And first mention here is if we deactivate a profile, will that then be, um, will that then be uh, available, the same deactivation if you apply within the self-service? In the initial sort of version of the, the self-service, bearing in mind I've just mentioned we've got a future version of that coming out fairly soon, it's not too likely to be in the initial version. There are certain ways of doing it in there, but certainly in the other version, we're coming out with the updated version of the self-service that should be uh, available in there. So that deactivation will reflect across. So obviously, if you've got an analyst and you're saying to your analyst, you're not allowed to use this particular um, uh, profile, then you want to have the same thing applying through to, to the self-service as well. Um, there's a question about import and export the business process. There is already a utility available for that, so that should be there. It may depend on, on the version you're on, but it's certainly available in some of the 3.6 uh, systems and probably going before that as well. So the business process, there are facilities in there to do an import and export of that. Next question is to do with uh, drag and drop your emails from Outlook. That's not actually something which we're, we're looking at this particular point. There, there are various, um, if you like, technical challenges within that. And it's normally within a sort of a service desk that people try to work within the service desk, within the particular uh, um, shared mailbox within that to keep those lines of communication so everybody's got access to that. Once people start to looking into Outlook, it, it starts to sort of blur those lines and then becomes a little bit more of a challenge with the, uh, the audit trail perspective. Uh, there's mention about the, the self-service working on uh, a BlackBerry Classic. Uh, the way the self-service is being designed uh, is to, to cater for different screen sizes. So I have to say it's a little while since I've used uh, a BlackBerry Classic, but it depends on the browser of that provided it goes on and, and caters for the fairly recent versions of the, uh, the HTML side of things, then it's fairly likely it will work. But it, it's not something we've actually, to this particular point, done any particular uh, checking on. Um, okay, just reading through. Uh, okay, it was mentioned about a particular release date for the uh, the mobile app. We're currently targeting uh, quarter two of this year for the mobile app to get that released. Um, one thing I would like to say is that we're we're looking at a different way of effectively getting you a uh, a beta version of that. And what will probably happen is we'll create um, an instance of support works in the cloud. You'll have access to that. It does require various changes to the support works uh, server side of things to enable some of the features on the on the mobile. So it will then be a case of uh, you know connecting to that particular instance, downloading the app onto your phone. Obviously, be in beta mode for for a little while. But as you can see from the screenshots, we're really a lot of the if you like the basic set of functionality is in there it's working as well the other thing we probably should have mentioned earlier is there's a call diary tab so you can go through and scroll through uh the, the diary updates to the call and and that's part of the you know the feature set within that so that particular beta version should be coming out uh, fairly soon 
the the quarter two target is more for a final um, say final for a version a releasable version which has got the feature set in there and you've got the options to uh, you know control that and to be able to use that within your environment so the interim will be uh, a support work server that we will host you'll connect to that and be able to check out functionality moving forward to the uh, quarter two release you'll be able to have the um, the, the instance, your own particular obviously instance of self-service, uh, sorry, of, of support works, your relevant version of that, and the mobile app uh, connecting to that, and obviously using your, your live system for that particular one. Um, so just checking through. So there's a question about the features for call profiles and changes to the emails be available. Uh, in 7.6.2, are these only available in 8.1 and beyond? These particular features that we're looking at, they do require things, they do rely on some of the things we talked about, um, again, back at the road, uh, at the, the Roadshow and the user group. There, there are things which we're putting into 8.1 on the platform side to enable some of these features to happen. And the, for that particular reason, there, there are features which you will need to be on the latest version of the, the version 8 to get those. But hopefully with the upgradable route, I, I know there's a step to get to it, but a lot more of the, um, if you like, the, the little pieces before, which kind of restricted a little bit of the upgrades, a lot of those have been taken out, a lot of our path has been smoothed. So going on to it, once you're on that particular version, you should be able to get the later versions a lot more straightforwardly. Things like, as I mentioned before, the, the client upgrades, things with the SLA rules as well, pardon me, <clears throat> with the SLA rules, so you'll still be able to configure those and use those after you go on. So it is uh, on version 8 uh, and the different versions of ITSM 4 and above. Um, the, it's another question down to the, uh, the, pr the profiles. Uh, can you use the uh, filters to ensure that only a very minimal number of profiles are visible in self-service? Um, that's probably a slightly different uh, question, not specifically what we've tackled within this feature of the, the call profile. That's more aimed at the, the client side of things. As I mentioned before, uh, with the newer version of self-service, we can take that away and look at uh, being able to cater for something like that within the newer self-service. So there's possibly being able to say that the, the customer has to enter a minimum number. You may not want to show all of the levels you have. You may only want to show up to potentially three odd levels. And again, it's that balance of making sure the customer gives you relevant information, enough information, but you don't want to present them with too much. Otherwise, they're going to say, I don't know what I'm supposed to choose here just because the list gets a bit too long, a bit too in-depth. So there's some potential in there to, to look at that. But that, again, would come out within the, um, uh, within the new version of the self-service coming up. So having a look through... Um, uh, there's a question about uh, a native Windows mobile app. The, the way we're generating the mobile app, where we're creating that from a technology perspective, is in, in, if you like, a, a framework, and then that effectively is converted for different particular uh, platforms. The initial one we're targeting, and probably because uh, it's been a bit more, shall we say, widespread, more companies have gone down an iPhone route uh, to this particular point. Uh, I know Android is picking up quite extensively, but the, the initial one is probably going to go out on the iOS uh, platform. But again, because of the way we're developing it, it should be fairly quick after that to go down uh, the Android route. Different people have Android phones and want to be able to use it within that. There is potential that we create a, a Windows mobile app, but um, along the same lines in terms of modify it for that. But we need to be aware that uh, whenever we do create uh, a different app, there are obviously going to be slight differences. There's going to be additional work in there. And that's going to be um, something to consider at the time. It may be feasible, it may not. So at this particular point, it'll be iOS initially, and we've then got plans to go down Android. We're going to review the situation further down the line with regards to the uh, mobile. Uh, another question to do with the uh, self-service. Um, the talk about release for that being uh, available. The uh, similar to the were mentioned with the um, the mobile will be producing uh, effectively a support works instance in the cloud, and that will have the different, uh, so the latest version of self-service within that. So once we get to, if you like, a, a suitable line in the sand to say, here's some functionality in here, you can go in, you can have a play and look, we can then do the publicizing of that to say, go in, here's the details, how you can log in, how you get access to that, etc. That will let you see what's been done. 
it's obviously going to be still uh, in, if you like, a beta mode. So yes, there may be some issues come up with that. And yes, there'll probably be some things which aren't quite complete as you'd expect, but at least it will give you a good uh, feel for what the system is going to uh, look like, how it's going to operate, what sort of features are in there, working on the different um, uh, platforms as well, if you're a, a browser on a tablet or a browser on a phone, etc., or your desktop. So that's something we're, we're looking to put forward uh, as well. There is actually a, uh, a webinar coming up on the, the self-service and that webinar is scheduled for the, the 21st of April. Um, hopefully before that, through uh, whether it's the marketing newsletters or other content, we should have some things coming out to you to, uh, to indicate here, go to this particular place, it's available, we put these particular features in and you'll then be able to see right got access to that. So you don't necessarily have to wait until the webinar, but the webinar will certainly take you through demonstration of features, how they work, um, how it's going to flow through various examples and scenarios to, to take you through that particular system. Okay, so that's, uh, I think there are probably one or two other questions in here. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll take those offline, just aware of uh, time a little bit. And we'll take those offline and we'll get replies back to uh, the various people uh, that have uh, asked those particular questions. But uh, I'd just like to thank you for your time. Thank you for your uh, input. Thank you for your questions. It's uh, sometimes a little bit challenging picking up the questions off the cuff, but it's uh, something we thrive on to, to give that feedback. It's really great to be uh, part of getting something back to uh, you know, information out to the customers and keep you informed of what things are going on. So thanks very much for, for attending. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Dave, for, for taking us through that presentation. I hope everyone found it useful and interesting. And if you have any additional questions, um, please do get in touch with us or your relationship manager. Um, we'll provide answers um, as soon as possible. And just to let you know, the, the recording of this session will be available on the YouTube channel shortly, and we'll make sure it gets emailed out to you. Um, so finally, thank you very much for taking your time to attend and please remember about um, visiting our webinar centre for any future academies. Have a nice day. Thank you.